it comes to City on Fire, based off the first three episodes, it definitely feels like the kind of show that should be a miniseries more than like a multiple season story. And even though it starts off really strong, you can see that it's it's starting to lose its luster a bit. So to summarize the show, it's about a young woman named Sam, another woman named Regan, her brother named William, and also a boy named Charlie. These are the four main characters from what I'm seeing thus far. Sam is a girl who actually knew Charlie because they went to the same high school together, but she was a year ahead. And Charlie is desperately in love with her. And that's because Sam is an extrovert, highly into the music scene and also photography. And she pretty much adopted Charlie. Charlie is this sweet boy. He's pretty much everything that most of the people in Sam's life is not. For her mother abandoned her when she was 11. Her father is pretty much so struck with grief that all he can do is provide a house over their head, a roof over their head. And while Sam does have friends in the music industry, a lot of them are indie rock bands with a little bit of on kiss feel. And their desire for destruction, she questions it and is not fully comfortable with it. Charlie on the hand is just I think they called him like a Labrador or something like that because he's cute, cuddly, reliable, loyal. And in a way you can see that she's molding him. Maybe molding him to be the kind of friend she needs and wants. Maybe potential boyfriend. It's hard to say. Either way, Charlie's just happy to be in her life. Which is why he becomes quite distraught when on July 4th, 20, no, 2003, Sam gets shot in the head. She's living afterwards, but she still got shot and is in critical condition. Switching to Regan, Regan is William's sister, and Regan is dealing with her father's company potentially being taken over by her uncle, Amory, Amory, something like that, who might have set up her father Bill and honestly might be part of the reason why Sam got shot. And the reason I say that is because Regan's husband, Keith, was messing around with Sam. And because of that potential scandal, who knows if Amory might have gotten involved to handle the situation and maybe sent an amateur instead of a professional so that it couldn't be as easily linked to him. Who knows? Getting to William, William used to be in the band that Sam follows, but then they broke up for various different reasons. It could be the fact that William's drug use led to him acting violent or saying a lot of hurtful things. Maybe he didn't agree with his band members wanting to commit arson. It's hard to say. The only thing we know right now is that William is living with his boyfriend Mercer, who is a teacher from the South, I think specifically Georgia. And in many ways, Mercer's kind of like a black version, but older of Charlie. Very sweet, bit naive, but is so entranced by their partner that they are a bit blind to their faults. And by the time we hit episode three, because of Mercer's associate with William and the fact that Mercer is the one who reported and found Sam, he's now a suspect because he had William's jacket on, which had drugs on him. Him being black in 2003 in New York doesn't help and also him being one of the few people who the cops could possibly pin this on. And outside of him, there's also the potential of Charlie being pinned on it because of Charlie being with Sam the night that she got shot. And Keith becomes a suspect because he decides to go to Sam's dorm room. Sam's roommate reports him and now he's also on the cops radar. So in terms of highlights, our first highlight is just based off the first episode, you will have hope for this show. It seems like it can stretch out Sam's murder mystery while still giving you a lot of things to be interested in. Whether it's the band that Nikki's part of, and Nikki is one of Sam's friends, and them doing awesome in order to destroy the city to rebuild it in the image that they think it should be in. You have William dealing with his drug issues and Mercer who's this innocent little puppy that follows him around. You have Regan and all of her family's political drama, which 
I never saw Secession, but it kind of gives Secession vibes. So it makes it seem like there's a lot going on, sort of while Sam's murder investigation is happening, you'll be interested. And then speaking of Sam specifically, she has, it would be disrespectful to say that she has manic pixie dream girl energy, but <laughs> she does have that certain allure, that certain attraction where you can understand why Charlie is just so enamored by her and pretty much does whatever she wants to do. For whether you're talking about her dragging him to shows, introducing him to music, showing her zine that she makes, or even getting him into, I won't say she got him into trouble, but she definitely gets him to experiment with mushrooms and other things. You can see that she is such a catalyst for so much in his life that as much as you can see Charlie is that really boring male protagonist who gets this girl that comes into life that somehow jump starts in and you kind of want to damn him for that, at the same time, you get it. And on top of that, I would even say when it comes to Charlie and Sam's relationship, because it's an extrovert and introvert relationship, you can see that when Sam feels burnt out by people, or she feels like she's not getting the reciprocation she needs, Charlie's not someone she uses to recharge, but rather is kind of a safe space for her. He provides the love, care, and gentleness that her father doesn't give, and that her mother abandoned, from, abandoned her and because of her mother abandoning her that she can't get from her either. So in a way, while it's not always apparent what Charlie's getting out of this, or rather what Sam's getting out of this, in time, you see there is balance to their relationship. Expanding a little bit on the characters, I also have to admit that I am increasingly interested in Nikki's group, whether it's Nikki, Solomon, or Nikki and Solomon's shared girlfriend, I guess you can say, whose name is Sewer Girl. The reason why this group is so interesting is Solomon clearly got issues, especially with violence. But at the same time, while he has these violent issues, he's with Sewer Girl, who is this woman from Louisiana who made her way up to the Midwest and then eventually New York. And there's something about her where you kind of want to learn more about her story, even though she kind of gave you the gist of it. Like, it does feel like there's certain missing pieces. And I'm not saying missing pieces that are going to lead to her potentially being Sam's murderer. If anything, I f strongly feel that Will, who was Regan and Keith's son, he probably did it, but that's a whole different topic. Anyway, Sue goes interesting, and then Nikki, being that he has this vibe of sort of being like Sex Pistols in a way, in terms of him being kind of punk rock and maybe a little bit of an anarchist, yet at the same time, him growing up in a very religious household, it seems, where he really enjoyed Sunday school, else really took note of it, and even tries to give Charlie some absolvement when it comes to Charlie's guilt from not being there for Sam. It gives you the type of layers where it's like, I want to understand and know more about, about these people. With that said, while Nikki's group, I think, are holding steady, and Sam's holding steady in, in terms of her relationship with Charlie, whether we're talking about flashbacks or even him trying to explore who she is, I can't say when it comes to William, Regan, or even Keith that they are driving the same kind of interest. And slowly but surely, they're starting to feel like they're part of a different story altogether. Regan, with all of her family drama, it seems like a show or plot that didn't work somewhere else. They promise as actress they're going to get them on television one way or the other, or at least on a show. And so she gets slapped into this situation. and. It's weakly tied to the real hook of the show, but I don't know. I just feel that when it comes to Regan, there's something about the way her character is crafted is where we're supposed to be invested in her. We're supposed to feel bad for her because her father's being screwed over. Her brother's a drug addict. Her husband cheats or well, cheated on her. Her oldest son is a little bit of a bastard, but I get nothing. I get absolutely nothing. It just feels like we're just pushed for reason to feel sympathy for her rather than just naturally have it in us to have empathy. And that messes with me a little bit. Then when it comes to William, the issue with him is that he's a privileged drug addict. 
that's pretty much the beginning and the end of his character. And on top of that, he's a sarcastic butthead of a drag drug addict. So I understand that all, not all characters are supposed to be likable, but if you're not likable, then you should at least be hateable. And really, William doesn't elicit any reaction beyond me feeling sorry for Mercy for, for whatever reason, because they don't really break it down. He's in love with this du <laughs> dude. Which leads us to Keith. Nothing about Keith beyond being a potential factor in Sam's murder makes you care about his existence. He, for some reason, was dropping money into a slot near where Nikki's group is, and he met Sam because she one day found the money and then asked him about it. That somehow led to them having an affair, and it's there's so little details from them meeting to them messing around in her dorm room that it's like, what the hell happened? Never mind, she knows that he is married and I feel like that's them trying to taint Sam a little bit, but I don't feel like it really worked at all. Cause Sam is such a hook for this show that she could probably smack <laughs> Charlie with a gun and you would still fight her likable. So I don't know what they're doing, but I don't think it's gonna work and it's not gonna boost Keith whatsoever. So overall, judging City on Fire by its first three episodes, I can definitely say that this needs to be a one season show and I don't know if it's going to be able to bounce back so that all characters by episode 8 are, can, are treated in high regard, but at the very least I do believe that Sam's actress will continue to benefit from each role that she does including this one and sadly that might be it. <laughs>